Hey everybody, welcome to Mammoth Interactive's YouTube channel. First of all, I want to thank you for watching this video. And remember that this channel doesn't do Patreon, instead we sell our digital courses down below. And every single dollar that we get from the products you buy below goes into making more content. The best way to help out this channel and Mammoth Interactive is to subscribe to Mammoth Interactive's huge library of content. Get thousands of hours and hundreds of courses for a low, low price down below. We have a monthly option and a yearly option. Thanks for listening, and I'll see you in the video. Hey everybody, welcome to this tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to move an object along a spline. This is actually really easy to do, so let's go ahead. Let's start. Let's make a blueprint class. We'll make it an actor here, and we'll call this um, we'll call this cube spline. All right. Let's hop in here, and first of all, we need to add in a cube, and we need to add in a spline. Um, not, not that one. Spline, all right? So you should see this little thing that's sticking out here. And all that's going to do is that's going to allow us to move along the spine. So let's hop back in here. And you can see that we now have the spline here. So what this means is that if you click on the spline, you can move it any which way. Now, if you right click on this, and uh, actually, so what you need to do is if you click here, it's there's a place we can just add in a spline here. Duplicate spine point, that's what it is. So you can move this one, uh, well, you don't want to move that one back here. But basically, you now can move up another one here. All right, pretty cool stuff. So you can do that again. Right click, duplicate spline point. Can move it here and it looks like this one has been it doesn't really matter though let's uh move that up here move it around and then if you play this well nothing happens because oh wow that one really went up far uh nevertheless let's move that guy back down here all right move it over all right so basically it's just going to come up and move around so it's pretty easy not too complicated but how do we actually make this work well let's hop into our event graph here and let's on the begin play we're going to add timeline all right and that's exactly what it is and what we're going to do is we're just going to play from the start okay now let's double click onto that here and this is going to give you the timeline template. We're going to click this function here. And basically, there's a couple things that we need to do here. So if we click here, we're going to add a key frame here. Now, um, the thing about this is that, for instance, we have the length here. This is the length of the entire animation. Okay. So if we make this, for example, two, this whole spline will be done in two seconds. All right. Let's make it three, okay, just like that here, three, and let's add in another, and so actually here, I'm just going to show you, I'm just going to add in this keyframe here, it doesn't really matter what it is, we're, what we're essentially going to do is move this to one here, but if I click on this, you can change the time to whatever you want, so if you make it three, then that works as well, and you can maybe make the value one, okay, so I believe if we play that here, it still doesn't work, right, and so, um, we're not quite we're not quite there yet um, but let's go back to the event graph here and what we need to do is we need to set the world transform and actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag this cube out here we're going to set world transform okay that's the one right here Okay, let's drag that up into here in the update section here. And in order to make this work, we need to do something with the track here. Okay, so for instance, uh, this track here um, is we need to get the spline. So we get the spline here. And then we're going to get the spline length. Okay, so we're going to get the spline length. And then we're going to multiply that float by float and we're gonna drag in and I'm actually just gonna unclick this here we're gonna drag that into the new track so essentially we're just gonna get the spline length here and then we're gonna multiply it okay and so this actually has to be moved over because we're gonna be 
adding in some extra thing here. Okay. Then from the spline, we are going to uh, get location at distance along spline. That's the one that we need to do. And then we need to just basically put in the distance here. Okay. And then very important, we need to add that into the world here. Okay. So we're going to do this again here. Um, actually, you know, we'll just we'll just do this for now. Let's. Um, I believe actually, if you click here, we go make transform. Yeah, so that's where you get it. You make transform here, and all we do is we do the location from here. Okay, so if we do that here, look at that. Looks pretty good. All right. Now there's a rotation here, and the thing about the rotation is that um, you can technically rotate this as well. And this is actually fairly easy. We're going to get rotation at distance along spline. It's basically the same thing here. Uh, you can actually delete this and you can move everything all to one spline node here if you want to. So like that way you can kind of see. Again, has to be world and you have to drag that in uh, to the color coded rotation node there. And so you can see that the cube was a little different. Okay, so let's watch it again without the rotation. So you can see cube doesn't rotate. Now, if you want, don't want rotation and you don't have to add it in. And likewise, we could add in scale as well. But I generally you don't do that. Okay, so there you go. You now have a <laughs> something that moves along a spline. All right, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.